guys today is sunday i hope every wednesday is off to an amazing start thanks so much for stopping in today guys guys before we go any further with today's video i have one question for you just one what in the winter wonderland is going on it is cold it is cold outside woke up this morning it is a balmy 28 29 degrees here in atlanta and this is not exclusive to atlanta all across the country it is cold drop down leave a comment let me know if you are ready for not spring but summer i am over it i decided to pull out my ish correct mug today ish correct is where we go when we are really trying to escape the cold coldness here uh in atlanta we didn't go this year we typically go to ish correct um for christmas we're missing it everybody we're everybody in the family we we are missing ish correct so 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 very much so having my coffee this morning in my ish correct mug if you've ever been to ish correct let me know your thoughts on it ish correct is that place we started going when we were kind of falling out of love with disney it was like a replacement for us went there going for the first time uh, a couple of years ago not really expecting a whole lot i mean it was mexico right everybody goes to mexico but there's something special about ish correct ish correct is located in playa del carmen the customer service just just everything we love that place now more than any vacation that we've ever gone the hospitality when we get on the luxury bus to head back to the airport they there's a shuttle that picks you up at the airport there's a shuttle and shuttle is kind of it, shuttle isn't doing it justice right it is a huge huge luxury bus that they pick you up uh, from the airport in and then they take you back in that same luxury bus and when we get off the bus to walk back into the airport we feel like we're leaving something behind almost like family right so really missing ish correct right now it is so cold here in atlanta if you don't mind drop down in the comments let us know where you are let us know what the temps are what are you doing to stay warm i will say it is a beautiful day here in atlanta eric is outside doing something in the yard so it's a really really pretty day but guys when i tell you it is cold right, got that out of the way um Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, what will we be, what will we be doing? Speaking. <laughs> we are going to pick up where we left off, kind of, in the basement. I have some things to share with you guys. I've been doing, you know, a lot of rearranging and refreshing down there uh, since I spoke with you guys last. So I'm going to share with you guys all of those updates. Um... I have some new items that I want to share with you guys and a whole bunch of other stuff. You guys are going to come along with me for all of that. So I uh, just wanted to stop in here, open up the vlog really quickly, just bring you guys up to speed. I'm going to finish my cup of Joe and then I'm going to come right back because um you know we're doing the basement refresh we did the pantry refresh and i know if you guys are anything like me here in 2024 you're kind of out with the old in with the new things and so i want to share with you some of the items that i think you really really need to pick up if you're doing like we are around here a home refresh so let me finish my coffee and i'll call y'all right back all right coffee all done really enjoyed my cup of coffee this morning I I like to switch out my coffee you we have a Keurig or I have a Keurig Eric does not drink coffee I did have an espresso you guys will recall but when I say I literally threw that Nespresso out the uh, mudroom door into the garage a few months back done 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 with nespresso so i'm back on my curate so i like to switch out my um k cups today had the mcdonald's premium brew i think it was 
smells just like McDonald's in the morning time if you pull up to the drive-thru for breakfast. So I love that coffee. Um, like I said, I go back and forth. Sometimes I'll get the I'll get the Starbucks brands. I'll get the uh, Duncan brand. Um, what's that other one? I can't think of it right now, but I switch out my coffee. I go back and forth between coffees. Uh, coffee brands, coffee flavors. Right now, I'm on my McDonald's cake, but we're not talking about coffee. What we're talking about right now are my top three Amazon home finds. Video not sponsored, but you guys know I am A, a Gucci girl, two, an Amazon girl, okay? So we're talking about some of the Amazon finds here for the home that I absolutely love. And if you're doing a refresh, you probably want to pick these items up. First off, we're going to start with the olive tree the olive tree if you do not have an olive tree in your home and you don't mind a good one or two or three full trees in your house do yourself a, a favor do yourself a flavor do yourself a favor and click the link um, down below for this olive tree you guys know what a few years ago the tree to have was the fiddle leaf fig the fiddle leaf fig tree had those really beautiful big green leaves um those dark green leaves they really helped to brighten up a room they added depth to the room of course they added the illusion of just something living and natural in whatever space you had that tree in well there's a new sheriff in town and that tree is the olive tree but here's a question for you guys if you have a real not faux we're talking real um fiddle leaf fig and it is still alive and you've had it over a month drop down leave a comment let me know i can't tell you the number of fiddle leaf fig trees i have gone through those trees are notoriously notoriously difficult to grow in the house right and then you can't leave them outside over the winter if you are in any of these climates we're living in right now where winter is just like what it's going it's cold it has to come inside of the house and then i just think the leaves start dropping and turning brown so i tell you i could not keep one of those things alive to save my life so said all that to say the fiddle leaf fig is out the olive tree is in. I remember mentioning to you guys in the last video that the home decor and home decor trends are so transient. They're coming in and out so much now. It's like, it's similar to just like fashion, right? Your, your clothing, your handbags and shoes and things. Home decor fashion is, it moves really fast, moves really fast. So if you try to keep up with all the home trends, just like with the fashion trends, you'll have a closet full of clothes and then you'll have a home full of, th full of things that you know you just don't use or don't want anymore and you're just running through money. So what I like to do, and I mentioned this in the last video, I like to pick and choose the home trends that I participate in, right? One of the ones that I decided to skip was everybody's favorite CB2 sofa. That slouchy white CB2 sofa, everybody in they mama got that sofa here on YouTube. I said, no girl, I don't want it because no one that I watched on YouTube with that sofa, I wasn't impressed. Like I said, it's slouchy. It'll be a brand new sofa, but it looks dingy. We've went and looked at that sofa uh, in the CB2 showroom. We have a CB2 outlet here in Atlanta. And if the CB2 outlet is any, in any indication of what that sofa is going to look like after two years, shoot, maybe a couple of months in your house, I don't want it. I don't want it. So it's just, there's no form to it. And look, I know that's the trend right now, right? Maybe the slouchy sofa. But when I think of sofa, I think of structure. I don't want a slouchy sofa, right? I don't want when people come over to my house, they're looking at the sofa like, dang, it's, is this dirty? Is it clean? I don't want it. But if you have that CB2 sofa, you drop down and you leave, leave a comment, please, ma'am, or sir, let me know how the sofa is holding up for you to each its own. I wasn't really impressed with it. And it's like I said, 
some trends in terms of home decor are going to be for some people. For me, that one, that's one that I said, you can miss me with that one. The olive tree, however, is one I absolutely love. It's not gonna be $5,000 like that CB2 sofa. <laughs> it's not gonna break the bank. And we all know Amazon, if you get it here and you don't like it, they will absolutely take it back. But I am loving, loving, loving the olive trees. They are like the fiddly fig tree. It was a really nice tree. Not gonna hold you. It's a really nice tree. But for me, I feel like the olive tree does something that the fiddly fig and this one over here, I think it's like an oak tree I have over here in the family room. I don't even know what that one is. It's gonna get replaced out for an olive tree, another olive tree, but I have one in the dining room. The one you're looking at now, is in my dining room and it just really brightens up that space even though the leaves aren't as big and as dark as the fiddly fig i feel that it absolutely in its own way brightens up that space but what i like it gives like a spa serene type feeling to my dining room i absolutely love it i love that those olive trees come in so many different sizes you can also get the olive stems these that i'm sharing now are actually in my kitchen i love the look of these olive branch stems, olive, olive stems in my kitchen. Again, just adding just a nice, it, it's simple, but it adds a really nice punch. Really spa-like, really serene. You guys know some of the faux foliage that we can buy at, let's say a Hobby Lobby, a Michaels, or even an Amazon, I feel that they can be a little bit too heavy and they really, really, really read fake. The olive stems for me, just like with the olive tree, they don't read fake and I, I just absolutely love them. Just absolutely love them. So the olive branches, that's what they are, olive branch. The olive branch here, the branches here in my kitchen and you get three in a pack if you order those on Amazon. So they'll be linked below. The olive tree will absolutely be linked below. I'll link the size that I have in my dining room. And a little tip here, if you get your olive tree home and it's not the height that you want, put it in another vessel and absolutely put maybe some boxes or some foam or something inside of the vessel to raise your tree up a little bit and it'll give you a little bit more um, height. All right, and then one final uh, home decor item that I really feel is going to be an awesome addition to your home. It's super cheap too, guys. I call it a candle, I call it candle jewelry. And I have it right here. You guys see that? This is just the cutest little item that I think I have come across on Amazon. It is so sweet. So super sweet. And so what it is, it's like a it's a candle charm. Um it's a mobile. That's what it is. You know when you had your little kids and you put them in their little baby bed, their crib, and you turn on the music and the mobile just spins. Well, this is the same thing. It works this well, it doesn't work the same way, but very very similar. So, this is what you get when you order it, right? you get this tray and then you get this piece right here which is ah a very strong magnet see that so you can kind of move it around and place it on the tray where you like and then you add your candle so i love this little candle right here i found this candle at target what last year and i just love how it's the same finish as the tray on the candle mobile. Um, so you don't get the candle with it. And the only downside to this, if there is one, you can't put a big candle on the tray as it is, you know, it's not very large. So this candle fits perfectly. And so the way it works is the heat from the candle actually helps the mobile to rotate. I have this one, well, I moved, I moved this one from my um, office just now. 
uh, to bring in here and share it with you guys. But I really think I want to get a couple of, couple more of these to put around the house. I want to get one to put in the basement for sure. Uh, but it is just so neat. There's several finishes on it. And so like I said, I will absolutely have all of these items linked below. Nothing that I've shared just now is going to break the bank. I don't think the mobile is even more than $12. The stems, what, maybe around 20 bucks for three. You guys know if you have um, ever tipped into Michael's to get your stems, they can be super expensive in there. And the tree, depending on the size, I wanna say you can get it starting at around maybe 59 bucks. But yeah, that's it. So I am going to do a little bit around the house really quickly. I'm um, gonna clean up the kitchen real quick. And um, I think then we'll tip down to the basement and see what's going on down there. All right guys, it's a little later. It's actually a lot later. I have put on my work clothes. I actually took a nap, put on my work clothes now because I've been down here in the basement doing a little painting. You see, well the mirror's been finished. I did that the other day. But I did this little table right here a few minutes ago and I said, wait a minute, I need to pull the camera out. I said I was gonna bring you guys down here. So we're down here in the basement. For those of you who this is your first video uh, in a while or first video ever, we are down here in the basement. It's 2024 and I am doing a little bit of a refresh refresh only all right we are taking out some of the old decor bringing in some new decor we are uh doing a few diys this table right here is an example of a diy i just did i wanted a couple of two new end tables down here for the basement but the size has to be so specific i said i just need to go ahead and paint these the color that i want that way I won't have to be on some wild goose chase looking for end tables. I already have the end tables, just paint them the color that I want them to be. So I did that. I'm gonna grab you guys and share the vases that I spray painted. I did put another coat on, so I'm loving that. We are also going to go ahead and hang up the artwork that I did back here on the walls. And oh, let me show you the guys these lamps. All right, so this is what they look like. So it's a set of two wall sconces. Really, really nice, really nice. These are the shades here. I still have them here in the plastic. So of course you get two of those. And then these are the pieces. <laughs> Eric will have to do these. He's um, on a call right now, so he'll get to these. If not in this video, the next video. And actually, so you know what'll actually have to probably be the next video because here's the glitch, right? So I wanted battery operated wall sconces. Well, as you can see, these have to be hard wired. They have to be hard wired. I'm not really trying to do any major installations for this particular project. Uh, we just had a guy come and install the light fixture upstairs in the pantry room. Now, had I had these at the time, I actually would have let him do these, but then I think he would have to cut drywall and stuff out and paint. I'm not really trying to do all that down here. Again, these are just, just like, just basic refreshes down here. Just a basic refresh. I think we actually have a workaround. I think we have a workaround. So uh, once we get to that part, of this particular little project. I'll share it with you because I don't wanna share it yet just in case it doesn't work. So stay tuned for that. However, um, the sconces, those sconces are actually going to go here on either side of the TV. As you can see, there's the mirror right there. I still need to pull uh, the paper off where I had it taped up. But yeah, I think those are gonna look great. Um, yeah, I think those are gonna look great right here either side of the fireplace can you guys kind of get a sense of how that's going to look I think it's gonna look nice there's a better look there of the little table that I was working on so I have the lamp all painted and I love it 
there's a glare because there's no lampshade on it. I'm actually going to get a new lampshade for the lamp. But I think it's going to look really good in here. And I think I'm going to put it over in that space right there. So I'm going to get rid of that lamp. going to get rid of that table. So I won't need that one anymore. Did, however, keep this one. And I have painted that one. We're going to head out later today, you and I, to look for a coffee table. I want a new coffee table down here. Uh, in just a second, I'm going to go ahead and take that artwork down. Take the paper off, put up the new artwork. This is the new artwork that's going to go up. You will recall, I think it was the last video, I shared my inspiration for these. And guys, so I put another coat on here, like I said, another coat of that stone textured spray paint. And I absolutely love how it turned out. They're all dry now and Oh my gosh, they, it feels like stone. It feels like stone. So two cans of that spray paint is what I used. As you can see, I've put in my little olive branches. Just trying to get a sense of what the vibe is going to be down here when everything is all done. So love that. And so if you were not here for the last video, this is the spray paint I used. This is the Krylon Stone Coarse Texture, and I have it in the color Sand. This, if you're wondering, uh, is the spray paint that I use to spray paint the mirror over there in the corner. This is by Bear. This is the Chalk Classic Noir. So I love that color, that's matte. This is the decor that I took off of the fireplace. I'm going to be taking that to the Goodwill to donate that. Won't be using that, at least I don't think I will. I don't know, maybe I'll keep this piece right here. Who knows, we will see. But these are the other two vessels that I painted in this coarse sand spray paint. And I love it. I really love how it turned out. Oh gosh, I hope you guys can see that. That is just gorgeous. Love it. I have the table in place uh, as you guys can see that little spot there is super super tight just a little tiny area right there so um, I think I did the right thing in just painting it instead of trying to head out to home goods or wherever and trying to find one that fits there that one fits perfectly so just painted it and I like it but um, guys, get into the lamp. Get into the lamp over here. Absolutely love the new position of this lamp. And of course, I'll have a lamp or maybe some greenery over there on um, that table here shortly. But, you know, I was thinking I was going to actually replace this lampshade. But now, guys, I don't know. I don't know. I'm really kind of liking how this lampshade, the white lampshade, looks with the, uh, the black lamp. I, I think I'm digging it. So, I don't know. I'm just going to let it sit for a while. And when I head out today, I will look for another lampshade. And I'm looking for a lampshade that's going to give a little bit more depth 
some richness to this little area right here. Um, as you guys can see, it's gray, gray, gray. We have the gray sofas. I love these sofas, by the way. These sofas we purchased at... Uh, where did we get these? These are from Macy's and we've had them a while. Many, many years we've had these and they are holding up beautifully. The low profile stature or nature of these sofas is actually two sectionals. I felt that they would look great because um, this is a good size basement, but then, you know, it's still a basement. So it's not going to offer up as much room as let's say the family room upstairs. So I didn't wanna have sofas down here that were going to just eat up the space. You know, you still wanna have some room to kind of move about. So loving how the little table fits uh, really nicely over there in the corner. Love the new position of the lamp. And like I said, I'm kind of digging the lamp shape, but we're gonna head out in a little bit and see what we can find. If I don't find anything, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll just keep that particular lampshade. The table is going to be gone. I'm gonna get rid of that. Loving the black mirror over there, loving it. There are a few areas on there I need to touch up. You guys know when you take the painter's tape off, there's always an area that you missed. So I have a couple of two spots that I need to touch up. Um, but yeah, so speaking of lampshades, right? Guys, I can't tell you the number of lamp graveyards we have around the house. <laughs> um, I am going to go ahead and get rid of these. Um, I know I won't be using that one anymore, but this one right here may hang on to that one, right? May hang on to that one. But, so, speaking of lights, right? So we have these pendant lights here. And I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but those lights are pretty bling, bling, blingy. And we said we were over the bling, bling, blingy in this house. You know, don't let me influence you if you are still in love with the bling, bling. I just want to do something a little bit different around here for now. So, again, with the electrician, I don't want these pendant lights anymore. I want something else, but I don't want to have to call an electrician. So, let me show you guys my hack as soon as I can find the one I took off, here it is. Let me show you guys my hack for these lights. So, what I have been playing around with is taking this lampshade, placing it over the light, over that pendant light, and I have a new look. And I love that the original pendant light is kind of peeking through. I hope you guys can see that. I love that. It has like a basket weave effect to it. And so I'm going to go underneath with some like floral wire and attach these little things right here. Let's see if we can get the light. Yeah, I'm going to attach these to the light there and it should hold it in place. You know, the lampshades, they're not heavy at all. So, yep. That is what we're going to do, guys. That's what we're gonna do. So I'll need to get some floral wire while I'm out today. And yeah. All right, so I still need to get the pictures hung and we're going to use command strips for these because they are super light. Yep, super light. So no need to use, you know, hooks or anything like that. But yeah, I'm super excited about that, guys. Let me see. <laughs> I wish Eric was down here so that he could hold it. But I look at that. Look at it from that angle. Uh, yeah, I love it. And you know what, I think, okay, so this particular shade here is more of like a cream ivory color, but then this one over here across the room is like white. So yeah, I think I am going to have to switch that one over there out um, so that these two aren't competing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, 
I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, so let me go and try to find the command strips. I'm pretty sure we have some upstairs. If not, I will need to run to the store and I will pick you guys up when I get back and hopefully that other piece that I am waiting on for these wall sconces, remember those are going to go right over there right over there. So hopefully they will be here by the time I get back. All right, so real quick, lately I have been getting a few questions surrounding where an individual should start with luxury. What should be the point of entry? Not really trying to spend a whole lot of money. I know what last video, a couple of two videos back, I shared Tory Burch as a really nice contemporary brand if you were looking to kind of get your feet wet with luxury. But the questions I have uh, received since that video have been, how do you get into the real luxury game? How do you get into the real luxury game, game without spending a lot of money? I feel it's going to be accessories. Accessories give you the opportunity to purchase those luxury items without purchasing the big handbags and you know just blowing your bag <laughs> for the entire year purchasing accessories whether it be slgs shoes maybe even gives you the opportunity to kind of get your feet wet wet with luxury and still have a little coin left over you know to stretch out the year so i wanted to tip in here for those of you who have asked those of you who have inquired and share with my top three accessories that i feel are really going to give you the biggest bang for your buck in terms of just really kind of entering into the luxury game and so first off i'm wearing them right now sunglasses these are actually some gucci sunglasses glasses that i have had for eons eons and if you buy a really well-made pair of sunglasses they will be around if you take care of them for a long time this pair of gucci sunglasses that i'm wearing they don't look like sunglasses right because they're not i actually had the lenses removed from those and put clear lenses in i took them to my local optometrist and they were able to take the lenses that were original to the frames out and put in these clear ones and i have a teeny teeny drop of prescription added to these um so that at night when i'm driving you know it would kind of help my eyes out a little bit so sunglasses glasses of course um always really good um, a really good option not terribly expensive i want to say at the time that i purchased these which was again eons ago they were maybe around you know two three hundred dollars so still very expensive when you think about the fact that you can go to let's say an amazon and pick up some really nice looking frames i have some really i have a huge huge Amazon um, sunglasses collection and really proud of those but again they are not going to be in my opinion as well made as some of the luxury lenses or uh, sunglasses that you can purchase this pair right here also from Gucci these are coming off clear the lenses are coming off clear as well uh, but these are sunglasses they have like a transitional type of from blue, dark blue to gray. So I love the fact that I can wear these inside. The frames themselves are a really pretty blue. So love these. I have this Chanel pair right here. These give all the vibes. I just gotta try these on. They give all the vibes. These are just perfect for stunting on vacation, right? these are a complete and total mood absolutely love these you have your cc's here on the side love 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 these i've had these a while also and so when you compare purchasing a pair of sunglasses to let's say a three four five thousand up dollar bag sunglasses as a point of entry into the luxury game i feel is an absolute great place to start
So another point of entry for those of us out there who are really looking to kind of get our feet wet in this luxury game without blowing our budget for the entire year is going to be SLGs, right? I have pulled maybe about four or five of my SLGs from my collection to share with you some options here today. Loving this one right here. You guys know I am a Gucci girl, but this particular uh, card case is the Gucci and Balenciaga collaboration. This was a collaboration done when about 2021, I believe it was. Don't believe this one is available new anymore. I did purchase this new at the boutique. However, I do know that you can purchase this on some of the pre-loved markets. And I want to say when I purchased this, it was around four or $500. Again, that is a whopping big hunk of money for a wallet when you can go to your local TJ Maxx or Marshalls or wherever and purchase a wallet. But this is specifically for the ladies who inquired about getting into the luxury game. So four or $500, it's a cost of, being, of, of doing business. And honestly, when you think about, again, what you would spend on a Gucci purse, this is a steal. So you could take this little SLG Put it inside of a khaki handbag that you purchased from a Target, a Marshalls, a TJ Maxx, and it would be a really nice accompaniment to that particular purse. So the smaller card cases, they are wallets. They are just a slimmed, you know, shorter, smaller version of the big um, traditional wallets let's say like a Louis Vuitton Josephine wallet or something like that. So I love these little compact wallet and card cases for their, you know, their smaller compact size. Get your cheaper handbag, one with, you know, maybe a contrasting or a complimentary color. And I think this would look really great. So um, what I love about this particular wallet here, again, this is the Gucci Balenciaga collaboration. You know, at first glance, it, it, it reads Gucci. You have the Gucci green, wet, uh, green and red webbing, and you have that signature canvas. But then upon closer look, it's like, wait a minute, that's not a real Gucci wallet. Those are BBs and not uh, GGs, but this was actually their collaboration um, that they did back in 2021. So I love this one. The next SLG that I want to share with you guys is still Gucci. Most of my SLGs are going to be from Gucci because I think Gucci is actually my largest handbag collection. Yeah. I think most of my purses are by Gucci. Anyway, and so this is the Gucci Horsebit 1955. I actually purchased this wallet, or I think Eric was with me. Yeah. Um, we purchased this at the Gucci boutique up the street here, and we purchased this to go with my Gucci Horsebit 1955 handbag. So a really, really nice accompaniment to that bag. This bag, this wallet will run you around $500. But again, when you compare the price of the wallet to the handbag itself, which was around $3,000, this is a steal. A steal, again, only if you are trying to get into the luxury game. If you're not trying to do luxury, you don't want to hear anything we're talking about right here in this part of the video. Uh, but who knows, maybe down the road you may want to invest in something like this. But if you are just trying to get your feet wet, like I said, I keep emphasizing, you know, you're just starting out, an SLG is a great place to start. Again, this one is around $500. But how many times have you gone into your local Target or Marshalls or TJ Maxx and seen a handbag in one of the colors that's kind of dominant on this wallet. This wallet would look great in a brown handbag. This wallet would look great in a cream or khaki uh, handbag. No one would assume that the handbag that you pull this wallet out of is not a Gucci, you know, handbag. So really loving this one. This one has the gold hardware, really compact size. 
I love these um, smaller SLGs. They are perfect also when you're just, you forgot something at the grocery store and you forgot something at Target and you just need to run out really quickly. This is a really quick grab your, uh, grab this little wallet and your keys and head out the door. So I really love this one. Again, a really great point of entry. Um, what I will say about this one too, those of you who are in love or maybe thinking about quiet luxury versus loud luxury i would say this one is more on the quiet side you know the gucci red and green webbing this one kind of stands out and screams gucci this one right here is a little bit understated a little bit more understated all right so up next is this little baby right here this is the louis vuitton victorine wallet as you can see i have it here in the uh, Louis Vuitton monogram coated canvas, that signature canvas there that we all know and love. The little button right there is in this really pretty pop of fuchsia, all right? You open it up, this is the interior, okay? What's this? Uh, just some of the info. Drop down, leave a comment, let me know, do you, it, when you have a new handbag, a new wallet, do you ever take out all of the little paperwork, care instructions, the what to's and what for's that come with um, the wallets? I never take it all out. It's just always in here. Uh, but anyway, this is the Louis Vuitton Victorine wallet, a really nice little compact, look at this, more of the paperwork and stuff. Um, care instructions, barcodes, and whatnot. You guys hear that zipper though? Listen to this zipper. You get what you pay for, let me just say that. If I can go off on a tangent really quickly here. In terms of SLGs, I believe Louis Vuitton is the best. I believe the quality of the Louis Vuitton um, SLGs, the hardware is just impeccable. I would absolutely, if you asked, which one should you get? Louis Vuitton, Gucci, YSL, Chanel, in my opinion, I would go with Louis Vuitton first. Classic, classic, classic. This particular canvas is going nowhere. Yes, they're doing a lot of the empreinte leather right now, but this isn't going anywhere. So this particular wallet will run you $5.75 in the boutique. This particular wallet comes in a plethora of colorways and just finishes. You can get this in Empreinte. Um, I have it here in the Empreinte. This is the blue trimmed out in a really pretty burgundy. We purchased this one in Paris. This, the Empreinte leather is going to run you a little bit more than the monogram. I wanna say in Paris, this was around six something, but you know, I think it just depends where you go, where you purchase it, uh, what market you purchase it on. But I love these two little wallets right here. Again, the smaller SLGs are really, you know, they're just great for just really quick grab and goes. This particular finish right here, the empreinte leather, again, you can get a cheaper handbag. Again, we're really trying to figure out how to get into the luxury game without spending the entire year's budget, right? So get you a really nice handbag. Um, Target has some great ones. Target has some really great dupes for some of the more popular handbags as well. So I could absolutely see this in one of the Target handbags, just really easily able to you know kind of fit seamlessly into the look you're going for or the or the aesthetic you're going for for your you know your your handbag the same thing with this one this one's going to be a little bit more difficult if you are getting the um slgs with the really loud and vocal <laughs> canvases i would stick to a solid color handbag but again 575 600 dollars or so absolutely beats what the going rate currently is for um, any of the Louis Vuitton handbags. So just wanted to share these two. This is the YSL Cassandre Maltese flap car case in grain. That is a complete and total mouthful. Why is the name of the wallet larger than the wallet? This wallet, guys, is going to run you around 525. 
I purchased this new from YSL and this is my first black wallet. This is my first YSL wallet actually. Um, a really nice wallet. Very, very compact. It doesn't unfold like the, uh, the Louis Vuitton uh, Victorine wallets that I just shared. I don't think I opened this one up, but you see how this one unfolds. Again, these wallets, not quite as big as let's say a Josephine, but you can still, you know, put a lot of items in here. So this one right here from YSL has one, two, three, four slots on the inside for cards. And then there's a little back pocket here. I love that um, a lot of these wallets, card cases are able, you're able to get in multiple finishes. This one in particular, or this one is a great example of it. From YSL, you can get the hardware here in gold. So I love that. And this particular wallet comes in a lot of colors as well as finishes. So yeah, small SLGs, we've talked about sunglasses. And then the last one, I feel the last accessory that I feel is going to be a great point of entry for those of you looking to get into the luxury game, but not looking to, you know, as we start 24, we're, we're still lukewarm into 2024. It's still January. Don't blow all the money the first month of 2024, right? So I feel the sunglasses, the SLGs, those are great points of entry. You're gonna spend under, if you look real good, you're gonna spend under a thousand dollars for those. And then the final one I think is going to be scarves, right? Um, we all love a good scarf during the winter. I have this one here um, from Gucci. The scarves give you that look of, you know, that luxury, that elegance that we look for in the fashion houses, the luxury fashion houses. And so this particular scarf you have on one of those fabulous bags from let's say a Target and one of these colors that's apparent here on the scarf maybe a dark rich chocolate brown a gray I can see a silver handbag with this particular scarf no one would be able no one would think that your handbag was not you know a luxury bag because you just look so fabulous with this scarf you know draped around so this particular scarf I absolutely love I have this Fendi scarf as well. Again, the luxury, the logos on this particular one, not as apparent, all right? You see the Fendi logo down there, but you know, if you don't know that this is Fendi, you know, you, you don't know. But those in the know will see this particular scarf around your neck or you know, you got a big, uh, nice wool coat. This is going to just look simply amazing. You haven't gone out and spent $4,000 on a Fendi handbag, but this still gives you that air of luxury. I was getting ready to grab my shoes, purse, and coat and head out. Uh, you guys know I need a table for the basement, but then I was interrupted by the doorbell. We have a package. So let's open this up. Don't you guys love a good YouTube unboxing? So the table can wait. The table can wait a few minutes, right? I will get to the store to find the table. But let's see what this is. Oh my gosh. I, I know what this is, of course. I am so, so excited about it. I have been looking at these, this item forever. Well, not forever, but you know what I mean. And decided to go ahead and get it. Them. So I'm happy about it. You guys see this tree behind me? So this is an example of, you know, another faux tree that I have here in the house. Also, one of the great things about having the olive tree in your home, well, I don't know if it's great or, or if it's even true. You guys drop down, leave a comment and let me know. But in a lot of traditions or cultures, the olive tree is supposed to bring like health, wealth, and you know, just prosperity, you know, the olive trees are. So I'm gonna get me about five more of them and put around the house. But so yeah, just wanted to share that about olive tree. So here we are. If you know, you know what this is. You can tell by the gold seal 
in the fuchsia pink box that this is from Miss Tori Birch. Can y'all tell I am happy about this purchase? All right, what is it? Is it a purse? Did I get my first Tory Burch handbag? Let's see. Let's scoot back. Okay, okay. It's a lighting on me. It's a pair of shoes, guys. As you can see here, we have our signature Tory Burch dust bag. We have all of the pertinent, important, maybe not so important information. Is it another pair of Tory Burch Millers? It is not, they're not guys. I got the Tory Burch Dad Sandals. I love these, why do they look so big though? My feet are so huge. Gosh, I got a big foot. So these are a size 11. Yeah, so these are the dad sandals. You guys know that Chanel exploded onto the scene, what, a few summers ago with the dad sandals that everybody had to have. I wanted them, but I wasn't gonna spend that much money on a pair of sandals, right? Not dad sandals. And then they were so, they're, they're such a trendy item. Um, that's a lot of money to spend on sandals that may not be in season, you know, the next season. I still think they are around. And as you can see with Tory Burch having hers, there are a lot of brands who are putting their own spin on the said dad sandal. Tory Burch also has these in an off white. These are the shoe. They are all leather, obviously here in black. You see the Tory Burch logo there in the gold hardware. The leather is really, really soft. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for it to warm up so that I can wear these. But you guys see how big it looks. So if you have a large foot, it's gonna be a big shoe on you. They feel so, so super soft. Let me get the other one open here. I cannot believe I have a shoe from Tory Burch that is not the Tory Burch Miller. Don't get me wrong. I love, love, love the Tory Burch Millers, but it's great to have these. Can't you guys see these this summer with a cute sundress? I actually think these would look good with what I'm wearing today. I'm just wearing this oversized white button down tee. Let's stand up here. I have on these distressed oversized jeans. I'm just gonna wear some sneakers today, but if it were warmer, I think these would look so, so, just really nice with this, um, with this look that I'm wearing today. So I'm not going to try these on today. I already have my socks and everything on, but stay tuned for the video where I do a quick try on and just let you guys see, you know, how they look on the feet. If you already have these, because I do know these have been around for a few seasons. These are not a brand new, um, shoe from Tory Burch. They've been around for a while. Um, so if you already have these, drop down, leave a comment, let me know how, how you like these. I can say right off the bat, if you have wide feet, I have very, very, very narrow feet, but if you have wide feet, these are absolutely going to be wide feet friendly. And like I stated, they are super, super soft.